Good morning everybody, we are looking into thermoacoustic instabilities or combustion instabilities and uh, the earlier work in this topic was perhaps on solid uh, rocket motors and liquid rocket motors and instabilities that occurred in them. Instabilities occurs when you have high performance systems, so the initial high performance systems were solid rockets and liquid rockets and also afterburners of uh, jet engines, uh, fighter aircrafts. And <coughs> Uh, of course, later on, as you started getting better performance for other devices such as boilers, uh, furnaces, and land based gas turbine engines, uh, which uh, came towards the 90s, and, and uh, uh, you started getting instabilities in uh, uh, these devices also. So, pretty much any confined combustion system has combustion instability or thermoacoustic instabilities. So, this leads to we saw that this leads to intense pressure oscillations, and there can be intense heat transfer to the uh, surfaces which can even lead to sometimes breach of the combustor wall in some extreme instances. We can have excessive vibrations and blades come out and, and nuts and bolts breaking up and so on. And we can also have things like a change in blow off limits and so on because uh, the dynamic when, when the instability is the blow off limit uh, may change. And of course, we saw that we counter them with uh, maybe making slight design changes which will interrupt this coupling between unsteady heat release rate and uh, the acoustic field. So, we can have changes in fuel injection distribution pattern if there are a bunch of injectors distributed in certain way we try to redistribute the injectors. We can try to change the injector characteristics itself. So, this just involve change in one part and not really change in the entire geometry. We can also have change in the flame holder geometry or slight changes in position of the flame holder geometry. We can of course, implement uh, damping by things like liners and so on which will absorb the acoustic energy and we can affect changes in overall dimensions of the combustor and we can uh, thereby affect the time scales. So, if you alter the length of the combustor perhaps you can change the acoustic time scale because the length that the acoustic waves travel will change. If you uh, uh, change the <coughs> flow passage dimensions you can change the flow velocities which will change the hydrodynamic or the combustion time scales. <coughs> we can also perhaps alter the fuel slightly and, and fuel composition slightly and so on. So, these are the different strategies. Uh, so, people have <coughs> evidently had success in uh, dealing with instabilities which is why rockets are flying and uh, engines are working and uh, power plants are making power and so on. And uh, nevertheless, this has come to be very costly and time consuming. And <coughs> And we need a ability to predict and uh, eliminate combustion instabilities, if possible, a priori. But uh, I think the subject is not at a level where <coughs> you can uh, predict everything a priori. So just like you make CFD prediction of flow, you can have a prediction of the combustion dynamics characteristic at the design stage itself, and you can alter things during the design stage itself so that you can have uh, uh, you can ensure that the combustor is stable. People are trying to do that, but it's not uh, reach the stage. So, but that is where things are going, it, we may get there in 5 years or 10 years or 20 years, I do not know, but we, uh, we would probably get there. And uh, we looked at uh, what is called Rayleigh criteria, which says that when the unsteady heat release rate is in phase with the acoustic pressure, you create acoustic power, and if uh, we create, we add energy to the system and the amount of acoustic energy increases. Uh, so, if this is more than if the amount of energy that is added to the acoustic field is more than what is lost through the boundaries, then you actually have um, growth in the oscillation amplitude and we can have onset of instability. And we derived relic criteria with a lot of assumptions, but we still showed that this pressure should be in phase with the heat release uh, rate for uh, the uh, acoustic energy to grow or, or the acoustic energy to be added to the system. It will grow if this is more than what is added is more than what is lost. So, are there any questions? This is where we stop. Uh, we considered driving because of heat uh, added to the system. Right. Is there any practical scenario where uh, some other mode uh, driving is done? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic question. Uh, there is one scenario I can think of where uh, you can have, uh, you know, uh, entropy sports. Entropy sport means uh, temperature hot spots. If they are coming in and going through accelerating through a conversion nozzle or conversion diversion nozzle. As the entropy sports, uh, 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 this hot spot created in the combustor, and then that accelerates to the nozzle. So let me draw a schematic of this. 
So let us say this is a simple combustor at the end of it there is a uh, nozzle. So you have this uh, combustion happening this way and let us say there are some hot spots here and they are convected uh, and they are convected at the speed of the base flow or the mean flow and when they come here and they, they will start these spots will start accelerating and when they come into the accelerating zone they will be a acoustic wave will be reflected back because uh, in principle in the presence of uh, so we think of acoustics entropy and vorticity as independent modes of uh, uh, propagation that is what you guys were asking in the very first class and if you have a steady flow or uniform base flow or if you have no flow they are uncoupled but the moment you have a non uniform base flow they are getting coupled. So this is a, a practical example of uh, this uh, situation where, where the uh, uh, entropy wave is getting coupled with the acoustic wave. So you have entropy wave coming because there, there can be hot spots you have vortex and the burning happens there the core may be hotter and of course there will be dissipation dispersion the temperature will unify. So it is a question of the time taken for the aerodynamic dispersion versus the time it takes to get here. So if it survives the hot spot survives and gets to the uh, uh, nozzle then you have an acoustic field and then this can um, there can be feedback. So this is not a pure thermoacoustic mode this, uh, this is like a entropy generated acoustic wave and this can have instability. So this is the uh, one mechanism. The other mechanisms where uh, if you have oscillatory mass addition like in the case of a solid propellant rocket motor <coughs> you have uh, like a uh, oscillatory uh, you, you have uh, in a solid rocket motor. So this let me say entropy waves creating sound by Nozzle. You can have other situations where let us say you have a solid rocket motor I'm just drawing a simple schematic oh, let me draw this. Uh, now you when when the uh, uh, solid propellant burns it actually the solid pyrolysis first comes out and then burns and, and the gas is produced. So there is like a steady mass addition into the combustor but when there are acoustic oscillations this pyrolysis and the combustion their rates get altered and you actually have um, oscillatory mass addition that means there will be a steady mass flow your m dot will be equal to m dot bar plus m dot prime and this can indeed uh, produce driving. So this is like energy put in directly uh, from the sides so the, uh, this, is not, this is not a volume term but uh, a driving term coming from the boundaries this is just like a loudspeaker where it is actually sending in a, a volume of gas or mass of gas and, and fluctuating volume. So, uh, so this is a analogous situation so these are uh, two examples where there could be many examples where uh, so where it is not really unsteady heat release rate but unsteady uh, mass addition here here there is entropy wave accelerating to the nozzle which is produced uh, producing nozzle. Uh, I hope this answers your question anything else. Why does it produce sound only when accelerating to the nozzle? Uh, when you have a <coughs> uniform mean flow then entropy vorticity and acoustics are completely independent they can be completely decoupled but in the presence of a varying uh, non uniform base flow or the mean flow then they get they get coupled. So you need something to um, couple the these two modes. So uh, accelerating the nozzle is a good way of coupling these two modes there could be other ways but this for sure couples anything else okay. So uh, uh, so we will uh, now look at analyzing the instabilities as a result when the instability occurs there is a growth in oscillations. So if you have if you look at the plot of let us say you put a piece of electric transducer in or, or a microphone into the combustor and then you will see the oscillation uh, they actually grow 
and then eventually perhaps level off. So, there is a, a growth rate and we according to the linear theory we will have like an exponential growth rate um, and we saw that we have e power i omega t and if omega is complex we can write e power i times omega real plus i times omega imaginary t which can be written as e power i omega real t which is a periodic part times e power minus omega imaginary t. So, this is the uh, growth rate. So, the idea is we, uh, we want to do a simple model, very simple model and see if we can obtain a procedure to obtain this uh, eigenvalue omega for a combustor. And we to obtain eigenvalue problem we have to put in the right boundary conditions and solve for the eigenvalue and from that we will determine the periodic part which is the frequency and we will also determine the uh, will determine the growth rate. So, that that is the uh, objective that we are having here and so we will uh, uh, we will proceed towards that ok. So, there is a reference for the subject uh, it is not a textbook, but a review paper by McManus, Poinso and Candle, it is a 1993 paper titled a review of active control of uh, combustion instabilities in a journal called progress in energy and combustion sciences volume 19 pages 1 to 29. So, um, I can give you this paper and uh, this journal, so all the development whenever there is a new development you publish in a journal and then uh, the, uh, the, the, that is the journals which publish original articles. But this particular journal progress in energy and combustion sciences it is there in our library we can also get it through science direct uh, you can download this article if you want to uh, and this is a journal which gives review articles. Um, so, review article means a lot of people have done um, a lot of things about the subject and then somebody consolidates this and say ok this is where we are this 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 has been done and now this is where we should I think we should go and, and so on. So, that is when some development has happened not enough to write a book, but uh, enough some non trivial development has happened and people are trying to consolidate. So, if uh, uh, if you are a new student in the subject the first thing you should go and look at progress in energy and combustion sciences and look at the appropriate review articles for your topic and study them ok. Of course, if you have a textbook it is wonderful, but if there is no textbook this is the best way to do ok. So, this is a review article. So, we did make lots of simplifications some of them very drastic and I am looking forward to making even more simplifications because I want to get a tractable answer. So, the key word is uh, uh, tractable. So, we want to get a, uh, a tractable problem where you can actually attempt to do and then try to understand and then once you understand a small problem then you can solve a big problem with um, mega computer I mean a super computer or very fancy laser diagnostics experiment and so on. So, tractable problems are things which you can deal with. So, uh, as I mentioned every model is wrong invariably I think there is no model which is right except the reality itself which there is no way to observe it completely because I mean no matter which sensor you use you are still incomplete and even if you have all the sensors in the world you still cannot observe I mean you cannot really study all of it there will be too much data. So, we try to construct models which represent reality it is a fantasy world and, and we try to uh, pretend that this uh, is a representation of reality. So, when I say you are a good student or when you say I am a bad prof this actually is a it is not like I am bad or you are good completely I mean I may be bad in something good in something on Monday I may be very good on Tuesday I may be very bad and Wednesday I may be medium Friday I may be very happy in fact opposite students are very good on Fridays and uh, and profs are very good on Mondays I think and uh, it changes and also <coughs> some may be uh, like the MTech guys may be very good in the mornings the BTECs may be very sleepy in the mornings. So, but then we lump everything and say uh, uh, into one thing and we say ok this is that 
uh, oh, Vishnu is a nice guy, oh, this guy is a nice guy. <coughs> so, he may be nice sometimes, may, may not be nice. So, I make a model of you or you make a model of or me. Does he teach properly? Yes or no. I mean the reality is there are too many variables that you can't describe, so you just distill it into one on, on thing. So, uh, uh, we say that uh, uh, Kerala is rainy, Tamil Nadu does not rain. It is not that it does not rain, Tamil Nadu it does rain and it is not that it rains all the time in Kerala, but then we just make a model that Kerala is a rainy place, you go there you have to umbrella and when you come to Tamil Nadu, okay, you can leave the umbrella home, somebody else can use it, you do not need it, but it rains. So, we try to simplify things so that we can get on with life, otherwise things are so complex that we just cannot uh, 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 get on with life. So, so it is important to have a model and uh, then you may say if models are so nonsensical, uh, what is the use? So, it helps you deal with situation. For example, um, when I came to Chennai as a student in 1984, I decided that it was not worth bringing my umbrella. I thought it would, uh, it is best to leave it there because I heard from somebody that it rains like two days in a year. So, I thought why bring it, uh, 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 just leave it home. So, this helps you to, uh, okay, or, or if you say that Sujit is a bad teacher, then you can skip going to his classes, you can take some other electives. So, uh, it just helps you to deal with life. Uh, so, of course, you can deal with something and maybe right or wrong. Now, if it turns out that I am a fantastic prof and you uh, drop my class, then maybe you missed out. But if you made a model that I am a fantastic prof and you come here and you see that I speak total nonsense, then okay, you made a wrong decision. So, uh, all models are wrong, all models are incomplete. Uh, but the issue is how wrong is wrong or how right is right or how useful it is in all the thing. And what is of use may be depend on, uh, uh, it, it depends on the person at hand. So, I was uh, last week seeing some combustion instability data and it was spectacular data, I was jumping up and down seeing this data. And to me it is very useful because you know it, it's, it enables me to study all the things that I practice. But to the um, a person who was designing the rocket and trying to make the, the, the team, for them it is not interesting at all, it is disastrous for them. So, it depends on what is useful, it depends on uh, uh, what you want to, what, what is your objective, what is it that you want to accomplish. So, if your idea is to demonstrate some simple principle or to demonstrate what are the steps involving, then a tractable problem is good. If the idea is to make predictions, maybe tractability may be bad because you may be throwing the baby with the bathtub or something like that. So, you may have a simple solution, we have calculated the answer, it may look elegant, but uh, generally elegant solutions, there is a saying that uh, all good solutions are elegant solutions, but all elegant solutions need not be good, many of them are wrong. So, you can construct elegant solutions which are wrong and so on. So, we have to be, I mean this sounds like a uh, philosophical boring talk, but uh, this is very real because you see a combustor, it is making sound and you have to predict then you are gambling and you have to go with, I mean you want on the one hand you want an answer, but on the other hand you do not want to have a wrong answer, but then you, you, do you have a wrong answer rather than having no answer at all. So, these are the issues the engineer has to make up and you guys are uh, engineers. So, I think it is important to be able to understand uh, or to appreciate this philosophy. Uh, so, I will make more simplification. So, one simplification you can do is that the heat release happens in a compact zone. Okay. So, the key word here is compact. So, compact would mean that let us say the combustion zone is of the of let us say length d. Uh, or uh, well, let us see L combustion is much less than L A. So, this is C stands for combustion and A stands for acoustics and L A is of the order of lambda. It can be lambda by 2 for lambda by 2 combustors, lambda by 4 for the for a quarter wave tube or, or 3 lambda by 4 whatever, but uh, it is of that order. But the combustion zone is often maybe one tenth of the um, uh, on, on tenth of the wavelength, or much smaller than that. It can happen over a few centimeters, like or even millimeters. So it, it, it so this, this is a good assumption to make in some combustor. In many combustor, it may not be uh, good, but we try to. We are looking for some simplifications. So we'll pretend for a moment that we have a compact heat release zone, and such things do exist. Uh, then, if you have this assumption, then a lot of things simplify. So, this is a, a good simplification. So, let us see what simplifies when you have this assumption. So, we want to see 
what happens to acoustic pressure and acoustic velocity across a compact heat release zone okay that is the question so p prime u prime how do they change across a compact heat release so this is the question that i want to answer i want to ask any questions so let's uh, start with the momentum equation we do momentum for energy right yeah so we can do things in frequency domain which will simplify things but the same analysis can be done for time domain also rho bar i omega u hat plus so this is in so this is in time domain this is in frequency the man i have substituted u prime equal to u hat e power by omega t so now what i do is to integrate this equation across the compact heat release zone and i have to remember that i'm having a compact heat release zone so what i do is to let's do a volume integral uh -huh. so you have volume integral of rho bar i omega u hat dx plus um so if you have on dimensional combustor this will be integral over a distance times area so i can really say i can recast this i can recast this into integral over some length um uh, of the combustion zone uh, and uh, multiply by some area plus a times um uh, integral dp by dx times dx this will be integral dp right so this term can be written as a times integral dp equal to 0 the integral dp is uh a times p2 minus p1 or p plus minus p minus now we will take over limit of delta x tending to zero so i will say this limit of delta x tending to zero means a compact heat heat release zone um uh, let's think of let me draw a picture so this is the acoustic zone quite big and you have delta x and this is the compact heat release zone and i call this as minus and this is plus so i'm integrating across this okay so this is the uh, this is the geometry under consideration so now you have a finite quantity here if you look at rho i omega and u hat they're all finite things Let me write them here rho bar i omega times u hat so if you integrate a finite quantity over a infinitesimal distance what happens it go to zero so this term can drop to zero 
and this term will now become uh, p plus equal to p minus that is the condition you get. So, p plus equal to p minus which means the acoustic pressure is continuous across a compact heat release zone. This is clear now, this derivation. So, now let us take a look at the acoustic energy equation. What is the acoustic energy equation? Do P prime by do T plus gamma P bar prime by do x equal to gamma minus 1 rho. Yeah, we have like scales of uh, acoustics much greater than combustion, mm -hmm. but in a high frequency case, when mm -hmm. they are uh, similar, yeah. the effects will be. Uh, yeah, then we cannot apply this compact heat release uh, assumption. For example, if you are having a bluff body flame, if you are having a bluff body combustor, uh, the flame can be quite long. It will be a, uh, a considerable fraction of the combustion length and a considerable fraction of the wavelength. So, this will be a very bad assumption for a, a, a swirl burner for example, in a swirl burner the um, uh, heat release zone will be very compact because swirl has intense vigorous mixing and, and, and it is very short the flame is in the recirculation zone. So, it, it depends on the situation. So, there may be, so if you have a uh, uh, like if you have a grid stabilized burner. So, for example, if I take a <coughs> tube like this and I have some pores here and I am having lot of small flame stabilized here uh, this would be fine, but if my flame is like this and this is my duct then this is a bad assumption. So, uh, you have to use this assumption judiciously. Now, when you have this compact assumption the analysis simplifies and there are situations where this assumption is valid. So, we want to examine this assumption and I can uh, teach you how to do non compact flames also using this uh, uh, we first do the compact flame and then you we can use that to construct the solution for a distributed heat release. So, you have compact heat release zone versus distributed heat release zone and you can analyze that also, uh, but let us do compact heat, heat source and uh, I, I admit completely that it is not always valid at all. So, we are not considering the reacting zone, we are considering the whole uh, heat release zone. Heat release zone is the reacting zone, where the reacting the sense like uh, reactions happen in molecular. Yeah, so that, that is where the heat release rate happens. It can be. It's a very tricky situation because uh, see you have uh, now. I have to go to more details. So you have uh, so let's say you have some kind of uh, uh, flame here. Now ideally, if you had the ability to calculate entire thing, then we can use compressible Navier-Stokes equation, which contains everything and solve it in one shot and you will get the answer, but our inability to do that calls for simplification. I mean even for if you have big computer still may be difficult to do compressible situations. So, then we try to write equations for the acoustic zone which is of the order of the uh, combusted geometry and then we have to write equations for this uh, combustion zone. Now, again there is no combustion without hydrodynamics. So, in reality here there is, uh, so there is combustion plus hydrodynamics. Of course, hydrodynamic uh, zone will be out of this and in this the reaction may be happening perhaps if it is a laminar flame at the very thin zone otherwise may be a turbulent flame brush or whatever. So, in within this zone itself there may be more than one length scale and these are the topics of current research. 
So, I am kind of clubbing everything into one compact zone and so yes molecular reactions may be happening perhaps on the flame, but then mixing and, 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 and the entire hydrodynamics vortex shading all this may be happening in this length scale. So, it is not clear in some problems may be uh, it may be fine to have just two scales because you may have heat release zone and the fluid mechanics happening over a certain length scale a diffusion flame would be an example like that. So, if you have for example, if I and this is a reasonable configuration I mean such things exist I mean this can be idealization for a um, um, gas turbine combustor something. So, let us say you have um, very nice question thank you fuel coming this way. So, this is oxidizer and uh, here the red one is fuel and then there is this kind of mixing happens where the fuel diffuses out oxidizer diffuses in and in perhaps in a very idealistic sense you can say that the flame um, stands in this stoichiometric surface, but even if you are not very idealistic you can actually compute the uh, 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 the reaction zone and perhaps flame may not it may stand little bit away and there may be a small premix zone here and you can calculate all this. So, in this problem the hydrodynamic zone would be of the order of the uh, combustion zone because the this is the same reaction zone is also here and and uh, and it's uh, mixing happens and that is what is the uh, rate determining step uh, it's probably slower than the reaction and then this dimension will be the characteristic and uh, in this zone so it will probably be of the order of this uh, width of the combustor that would be the characteristic uh, dimension for the hydrodynamic zone but if you are having a premix flame on the other hand as I earlier drew you can have one length scale for the hydrodynamics another one for the uh, uh, the premix flame which may be very small and there may be a if and the premix flame will have a preheat zone and a reaction zone and, and so on. So, there we may be talking about three three length scales. So, the precise nature of the analysis depends on the precise nature of the problems and there is no one short uh, uh, on solution for everything that is true for combustion instability whatever analysis we do depends uh, specifically on that particular problem uh, there may be a general structure for the analysis, but the specific analysis it is not like one thing is there and you can plug in different numbers and get the analysis the analysis itself may be different. So, thank you for asking this question anything else ok. So, we go back to our energy equation. So, now let us do the same procedure here. So, we will try to integrate over this uh, combustion volume. So, this would be um, limit uh, delta x tends to 0 is ok. So, as I uh, mentioned earlier for a compact zone delta x will tend to 0. So, this term will go because you have finite thing uh, a, a integral of a finite quantity over a infinitesimal distance would be 0 and then you would get you had plus minus you had minus equal to So, the uh, okay, I will pause. So, the uh, acoustic velocity jumps across a compact heat release zone. So, here I wrote about pressure, so let me go back and write here acoustic velocity jumps 
across a compact heat release zone. So, this would be called a, a <coughs> jump conditions. So, you have the velocity is jumping and p hat plus is equal to p hat minus which means that the pressure is continuous. So, these are called the jump conditions or uh, uh, it is also called linearized Rankine Huguenot equations. If you take the Rankine Huguenot equations and linearize them you can derive them, but I have derived them in a more intuitive manner. One more observation I want to make is if I multiply and bring the area here, so I will get a so that means the volume jumps, volume flow rate jumps across the flame zone. A A U is like volume flow rate, right? U times area, velocity times area is like a volume flow rate. So, velocity times area, so this is like uh, Q is a, we already use for heat release. What is the symbol for volume flow rate? Let us call this, this, this is volume flow rate. So, So, that means there is dilatation, the, the volume jumping, it is called dilatation. So, there is, there is dilatation happening at the flame and this is what is the source for the uh, acoustic field, this dilatation. So, when there is dilatation that is when the volume flow rate is fluctuating or and there is an increase in volume flow rate, what happens? Uh, this is like a what kind of source monopole source. So, the flame acts as a monopole source because that is like a volume fluctuation uh, 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 idealization of a volume fluctuating source is called monopole source. So, flame is like a monopole source right here. Hope this much is clear. So the uh, next thing is we will, as I promised, we'll try to do a model problem which is tractable, and we'll try to make stability predictions. So that's the uh, next. So what is meant by a model problem? You know about models. You know about problems. What is meant by a model problem? Yeah, you set up some uh, a problem, fictitious problem, which and you study the problem, and you hope that the results you get mimics the uh, some of the phenomena that happens in reality. So you have the thing under control, and it's a problem you set up, which has certain results or features of the results, which are mimicking certain phenomena you observe. So that will be a model problem, as opposed to there's a situation and you try to model it. So Instability mechanisms in a real combustors are very complex due to coupled interactions because everything in that is coupled, and there are also inherent nonlinearities. And we are uh, uh, studying the flow in a turbulent case, turbulent flow, and this, uh, which is nonlinear inherently. The reactions, and uh, also there is acoustic field, uh, and, and all of them are interacting. Uh, so we have to do a lot of simplifications. I must emphasize to get a result. And the validity of the assumptions depend on the uh, depend very much on the combustion system under consideration. So many cases, the assumptions can give lead to 
oversimplified problem and that is a real danger. So, for example, if you have a combustor where hydrodynamic instability is very critical, you have a backward facing step where there is vortex shedding and this is critically controlling the combustor, the combustion phenomena and let us say you make a, a model which does not take this vortex shedding phenomena at all and then you can still get results, but it may be wrong. So, it may not be uh, uh, applicable for uh, making any useful predictions. So, there is no universal model as Vishnu pointed out some time back, everything depends on the uh, actual situation at hand and uh, uh, so we have to do this on a case by case uh, basis. And uh, But as a general introduction to combustion instability models and prediction, we will consider a very simple model describing the linear interaction between unsteady heat release and a acoustic resonator. So, in this framework I will introduce the n tau model of Croco, you might have heard of the name Croco. So, Croco was a professor from Italy, happens to be the guide of my PhD guide, so, um, more like my grandfather. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what he said is heat release rate is proportional to the velocity fluctuations at this so location of the flame. Let us uh, call that location of the flame at A, A. this is A is the flame location at some time, time delay tau at some time which is delayed by tau. So, let us say at this moment you have certain velocity, but the heat release at this moment is not dependent on the velocity at this moment, but velocity here which was some time back. It is more like uh, let me give you an example, uh, you are writing an examination today or uh, you are uh, uh, and, and the what, what is being affected is not only uh, it is not what you did today, what you are doing now, but what you did yesterday probably quite seriously affects your exam performance, because if you studied yesterday you would do well in the exam. If you did not study yesterday you are not going to do that well in the exam. So, this is like a model, uh, you may be a very high fund person and you may know everything and you may be able to crack the question without studying anything. So, I am not con considering such high fund students, uh, but I am looking at a person like me. So, if I have to do well in the exam, I have to study the previous day. So, my performance depend on what happened with some time delay tau, which is like I do not know um, last night, which is um, 12 hours before or 15 hours before or something like that. So, this is something like that. So, it is a simplification works for like my model about exam and studying depends on a certain class of people not applicable to high funda BTEX, but maybe for other people. Uh, uh, so, like that we make a, a, a assumption and, and we see like I said all models are wrong and if I if you say if you think that you are high funda BTEX and if you do not have the skill things may go down also right. I mean so, it is also there. So, any assumption can uh, fire or backfire, right? I mean, in cricket also, you see, you, you send some guy up the order and then he swings his bat around and it just gets overthrows or, or it get, goes like by the whatever he makes some runs and the captain looks like a, a big hero or he puts a second slip in place and suddenly a catch comes and, and but another time the same guy with the same fundas puts a second slip in place and nothing happens uh, or the guy who was sent up, uh, um, he just swings the bat around and peacefully gets out in the first ball itself. So, it can go wrong. So, uh, assumptions can fire or misfire or backfire. So, it is the same with uh, theory as well as uh, what is happening in practice. And a universal model does not exist, just like in cricket matches, there is no universal way of winning a game. Uh, there is no universe, or in exams, there is no universal way of uh, just quick fire results. Uh, so, you have to have a case by case basis, or I told you there is one way if you solve the full compressible flow equations with everything you can surely succeed. The same way if you are studying regularly during a semester, every hour you are studying and you are not doing nothing but that, then you will succeed. Uh, but if you want to take uh, cut corners and take risk, minimize the studying time, maximize the output, that is just like me making a model. So, then you have to gamble and see whether I should study the previous day or maybe previous day itself I may forget in the morning. So, I should get up at 4 o'clock and study, that is what I used to do. I used to get up at 4 a.m. and study, so that then I can go and crack the exam. So, it depends on what is the optimum time delay and all that. So, and this whole thing may fail also. So, 
so we look at a, a very simple problem uh, which will be set up in the following way and we know that closed end and open ends are very good so I want to show off that I can deal with both of them so I will have one end closed and one end open okay so this is closed end and this is open end and uh, let us have a flame holder here and you have a compact flame here this is a realistic assumption some of you came to saw see Lipica's experiment I think that is very similar to this and let us say we are sending a premixed uh, mixture well, uh, mixture and there are ways in which you can send it with keeping the uh, end as closed end you can put sintered plates with lot of pressure drops and the end will actually work quite close to a, a closed end. Uh, so we will call this x equal to 0 and this is x equal to L and this is x equal to A and now we have to construct a solution and solution itself is not that important the Eigen value which you get is very important because that is what gives the growth rate or decay rate and how would you construct a solution to this problem. We will use Crocker's assumption so we have boundary condition here boundary condition here and we can without heat release rate we are start set writing solution we have a sin kx plus b cos kx right or a e power i kx plus b e power minus kx the problem comes only when there is a heat release zone so let us split it into a region 1 where there is no heat release and then we will have a region 2 here there is also no heat release and yes we are very good at dealing with classical acoustics we know how to deal with closed end we are big starts in that we know how to deal with open end so only problem is here how will you deal with it now jump condition so here we apply the jump conditions and jump conditions involve heat release rate because you say that u plus minus u minus is proportional to q hat so we need a model for q hat and now you say that q goes like u prime so there is no new variable so now the problem is closed so we apply boundary condition for velocity here boundary condition for pressure here and use the matching condition for pressure and velocity here or the gem conditions and then with that you get a system of equations we can reduce the problem to four equations and four unknowns in terms of let us say we have A and B the wave amplitudes and we have C and D the left and right turning wave amplitudes. So we can get four equations in terms of four unknowns and we can solve them we can get a relation between three of them or between the four of them it is a linear problem you cannot get the absolute amplitude but you can get relationship between them and we can get the complex Eigen frequency. So that is what we will do in next class I hope it is clear if there are any questions please feel free to ask me. Okay, if there are none, thank you.